Today I'm going to show you how I created our lab's website. Um, it's super easy. We use GitHub Pages, which is a, uh, a free way to host websites using GitHub. Um, GitHub uses Jekyll, it's a static site generator. So essentially you host your files in a GitHub repository for your website. Here's my labs, for example. Um, and then GitHub uses Jekyll to build this site um, and then display it at the address you specify. Um, so every time I update files here, they update here automatically without me having to do any additional work. So it's a really simple way to have a website. It's a really simple way um, to maintain a website. Um, and I think once you see how easy it is, you'll be excited to try it. Okay, so what you can see here is that I actually forked this from this other repository, which is a Jekyll theme. And those were the instructions that were provided. So let's start from the beginning and I'll show you exactly how to build this up. Um, you might be looking at all these files and thinking like, yikes, that looks like a lot. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that. You will. These, I did not create most of these files. They came with the theme and there's a very small number of them that we actually had to edit. Um, so I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and exactly which ones. Okay, so first themes. There's a million Jekyll themes available. A ton of them are available free, so I highly recommend browsing them and finding one you like. Here, I'll just go to the themes really quickly to show you that there's a ton of different themes you could use for your website. Um, I like the contrast theme. That's what I use for my personal website and for my lab. Um, it doesn't look very much like it does here, but that's because it's undergone some changes. So let's click on the live demo just to see what it looks like so you can see. So it's telling us that the blog title will appear here. We have some nav buttons over here. Um, here's all the blog posts, and then here's some um, social media links. So all I did was take that theme and just customize a couple of things, fill in some blanks to get my own stuff to show up here. So I'll show you that now. Um, so let's actually go to the About tab. Um, we could similarly have clicked Get Contrast on GitHub, but we're going to start with About. So it says just fork this repository to install this theme and adjust the config file to use with GitHub pages and your page is done. So it's literally this simple, but if you've never done it before, you might be wondering like, how do I even do that? I'll show you. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do here is fork this repository. So I'm going to click this little fork button and remember that's what, let me go back here. That's what the about page said we should do. Um, so it says just fork this repository and adjust the config file and your page should be done. Okay, so let's press the fork button. That's this little button up here, fork. And it says I've already forked this for my lab's website. Let's fork it again for my own account. And I actually just deleted my personal website and I'm going to rebuild it right now just so you can watch me do it. Um, it's literally that easy. So now it's saying it's forking this repository. Great. Um, so and the branches even with the master. Cool. Okay, so let's look and see what we actually have here are a bunch of files. Um, so the whole website was already built for us. Um, and what we can do is actually go to the settings. And I'm going to rename this repository. So on GitHub, if you want to have a personal website, you automatically get one at the at your username, Kshuler, that's my username, github.io. We try to visit there. I just deleted my whole website. That's why it says there's not a GitHub Pages site here. There's nothing there right now. Um, so what we need to do is name our repository exact, exactly that, github.io. That's the name that everybody gets for free. GitHub will recognize that this is supposed to be your website and it will use this repository as your website and the files will be available there. So let's rename our repository this. So now you can see that I now have kshuler at kshuler.github.io. That's the name of this repository. And it's been forked from the contrast theme, which is what we just did. Now there's some things that I'm gonna wanna customize because I don't want this to be exactly the same as this site, right? Um, which is available here. So I'm gonna just adjust this. This is actually gonna be Katie's personal website. And then it should be available at kshuler.github. Io. Okay, so I made those changes, and now I'm going to click on, actually I'll go back to where it said site not found and we'll refresh. 
and we can see that the blog is available there. So I literally did nothing except fork this repository, change the name to my uh, GitHub address that everyone has, your username .github.io, um, and now I'm hosting this website. So the next thing we want to do is customize it. So for my website, um, let's do a couple of customizations. Let's just keep following the installation instructions. Fork this repository, done. Adjust the config file. Okay, so let's find the config file. Here it is. It says I should adjust this file um, to create my own website. So I'll click this little edit this file button. And I'm doing all of this in the GUI on GitHub. I'm doing that on purpose because I think if you already know how to use Git from your computer or from the GitHub desktop, you'll know how to do these things that way. But people who don't have any experience with that, I think it's helpful that they can see that you don't actually need to do any programming. You can just edit all the files right in the GUI um, and it works great that way too. Okay, so for blog title, let's change it to Catherine Schuler. This is what I want the name of my the title to be and that's gonna show up here. And this is actually the old one. Here's mine, so I'm going to pull it over. And this is at mykschuler.github.io. So blog title. I should say Catherine Schuler. I'm going to make the author Katie Schuler my name. And it says description made with heart B. Ooh. So that's probably going to show up here, made with love. So I'm going to change that to say University of Pennsylvania. Great. Um, and then these other things are just some defaults that I'm going to keep the same, that the language for the website's English, the date format's a specific thing. Then there's a layout, and the author of this theme has left a couple of hints about what each of these things do. So, sh so sh show social is probably the part that shows this footer down here. Show ex excerpts is set to true. Um, that's probably that it's showing on the blog excerpts and not just a list. Um, so we can uh, decide what we want to do there. I'm actually going to change it to false, just to see, so we can see some changes on my website when we do this. Oops, let me hit control S. Show frame, adds a gray frame to the site. I didn't do that. Um, and then show sidebar, show a sidebar instead of the usual header. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to leave all that stuff as is, and then we'll go down to the nav bar. So for navigation, there seems to be two file, two things here, home and about. Um, and it doesn't list a title, which means it's probably deriving its title from whatever these files are named in their header material. But I suspect we'll be able to add a title. So let's just do title, and then we want the first one to be um, home change. I'm just going to do that so you can see that it actually changes. And then the readme file. We'll change the title to about me, so you can see it be different. Um, cool, okay, so and then external here are some links. All these links actually go to this other person, so I'm going to change these to me. And I'm going to change this URL to um, me. My personal GitHub username, and then subscribe. I'll probably change this maybe to my Twitter feed or something. Let's try doing that. Do Twitter, and then I never tweet, so I don't know why I bother, but um, just in case, we'll include that there. And then my Twitter, I have no idea what it is. I'm just going to guess for now. This probably won't work. But let's try it. Okay. So that should be all we have to do. Remember, on the about part, it said we just had to make these couple of changes and we should be done. So let's do commit. And then remember before I told you that every time you commit files, you change files and save them to the GitHub repo, it rebuilds your site. So if we hit refresh, let's go back to the main site. So it says that we've updated the config file 10 seconds ago. And if we hit refresh on our website, let's go back to the beginning. Waited a couple of seconds for it to update. Let's go back to the config file so you can see whatever changes we made. Okay, so the title up here should change to Catherine Schuler. Let's refresh again, see if it had a chance to build. No. Let's 
go down and see if I happen to do anything bad. Yes, I did. Okay. So this is, I'm just going to leave this in because I think it's helpful to see. Probably we have to have our um, title in quotes and it's probably having trouble parsing that white space without them. See how these are in quotes? I'm just going to make that fix. Make sure I have quotes everywhere else. Yep. And then I'm going to commit the change again. And usually GitHub will send you an email that says your site failed to build if you had some trouble. Well, let's try it again now. There we go. So a couple of the changes that we made took place. My name came up here because I changed the blog title. The changes got made to the nav bar. So remember we changed the title and now we have two different titles here. Um, and then we also made this change where instead of showing article excerpts on the home page, we're now showing a list of posts. Cool. And then University of Pennsylvania showed up down here. And then a couple of different um, icons and URLs. It looks like we don't see the Twitter tag, which means I'm, something is, is going wrong with that one that I changed. Um, but we can get to the bottom of that later. Okay. Great, so let me tell you some of the other changes I wanna make here. So let me go back in to edit this. So what I actually want to be on my website, I want there to be a homepage that's just a couple of facts about me and that's it. Um, I like for things to be simple. And then I actually want three things on my nav bar and you probably will want different things. Not all of them will navigate to a file in the website. So um, let's start with the first one. So I actually want the first link, I think, to go to my CV. So I'm going to change the file to the name of my CV. I haven't added this yet, but I'm going to upload it next, katie.pdf, what I call my CV. Um, and then I'm going to change the title to be CV. And then icon is, is telling us that th there might be an icon that shows up. If you use the um, show sidebar version, each of the navbar items gets an icon. I'm not going to use that so I don't really have to change these. So I want it to say CV and then I want there to be a link to my lab. So that one doesn't actually need a file because it's an external link. So I'll call that lab and then I will have this go to a URL. I'll have it go to my labs URL. Okay. And I need the end quotes there. And then for the last one, I want it to say um, my lab, my CV, and blog. And that should go to a file. And the file we'll call blog.markdown for now. So neither of these two files exist. So when we try to go to these links, probably nothing's going to happen. Um, but we'll give it a shot anyway. I don't actually know if I need this backslash, I'm just guessing. Um, so it might work just like this, it might work with the backslash, both might work, I don't know. Okay, so then we'll do commit changes. So a couple of changes should take place on the site if I haven't made any mistakes. So we changed the nav bar here, we should get different buttons up here, and then they sh they're being linked to specific things that don't exist. So only my lab website should work and the other ones should just stay at this page. So let's refresh. Uh-oh. Let's see if I made any mistakes. Looks fine, looks fine. There's commas in the right place. Everything looks fine. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, that one just needed a little time. It wasn't messed up. Okay, so here I have my own website. I have CV Lab Blog. Um, I'm still showing the post page on the front page, which isn't what I want exactly. Um, I want actually this to be on the blog page, and on my front page, I just want there to be um, just my own information. So let's try the other two. So CV is supposed to go to my personal CV, but it's not going to because that doesn't exist, and blog also doesn't exist. So let's try to go make those things exist. So the first thing, the index page is this front page. So I'm just going to open this. And you can see that it's it's using what's called liquid to deliver these posts, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I'm just going to change this. And I'm going to say that this title should actually be blog. 
and I want this to have the title posts. I'm, I'm assuming that title equals posts is what's rendering this. So I'm just going to leave that as posts um, so people can see my blog. Then I'm going to press commit changes. And the site comes with these sample blog posts, so we can check it out, but we can change those to our own. So I also actually want to go back and make another change because remember I told the config file that it should look in blog.markdown to make this happen. So I'm going to change the, this changes the name of the file and commit those changes. Great. So now we're actually missing an index. So probably when we refresh, either nothing will show up here, this should get moved to the blog link, um, and then nothing should show up on the index. Give it a few minutes to load, um, but sometimes the um, sometimes the README file renders. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and create a new file. So we want to add an index file because remember I said I want my front page to be like something about me. So I'm going to do index.markdown. You could also call it .html if you want to, and then at the top of the file you need three dashes, and this is called the header material. Um, and that's where you can do, tell it a couple of pieces of information. This is all Jekyll, so you can look into the Jekyll docs if you want to customize even further. But at the very least, we need to choose a layout. I'm gonna choose page. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds of layouts. I'll show you where they exist later. And then a title, I'm gonna call it blog. And that's all I'm gonna put in the header. And then I'm going to put some information about me. So I'm just going to copy what I had before. I'm going to just copy and pasted some information I had. You could type anything you want here. Then I'm going to hit commit. And now we have an index file. Okay, so let's hit refresh and see if any of our updates took place. Okay, so right now we're getting 404 not found for the... Um, for the index because we don't have an index yet. We just added it, so it should be building as we speak. But our blog should go to our blog link. And once and that one's showing 404 too. Let me click on that again. And CV, nothing. The lab link is working. Okay, so I'm gonna resist the urge to like re-record this where these mistakes don't happen because I think it's helpful to see how you troubleshoot and fix these things. So what I'm thinking is that um, in the config file, on the one hand, the, the index file should load eventually. So we'll just keep trying. But we can also go to the um, config file. And remember before I was saying, I don't know if it needs these slashes. Let's just take them out. Maybe that'll work. And commit. And let's refresh and see if anything has changed. No, no, no. Click on blog, no. Okay, there we go. So it just took a minute to load. So now, we have, it's saying it's called title blog, which isn't exactly right. We can go and fix that. Um, over here we have blog CV. Okay. Okay, so now let's go back and see what's going on on these files. So on our index file, we have, oops, that I wrote the title blog, which isn't what we want. Um, we actually want this to be the about me page. And I actually want this to be my front page. There's a couple of ways we could take this title out. I'm just going to try the super simple way of just making it nothing. <laughs> and then hopefully that will take that little blog part away. So we'll commit those changes. Then we can go back in and we should see those changes updating. Let's go visit the blog page. Let's go to blog.markdown. And we should be seeing this page work out fine. 
title is blog, layout default, everything should be working fine. Okay, so let's just refresh and see how that's going. Okay, so the title we just took out went away. So now I have this just little summary about myself when you land on my website. Um, I have nothing at my CV yet because we didn't upload that. I have a link to my lab that works. We can click that and it'll go to my lab's website. And then I have a link to a blog that wasn't working, but now it is. So it just needed some time to update. Great. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, let's click on myself, and it looks like the Twitter link finally loaded. It takes a little while sometimes. Um, so the next thing I want to do is add my CV. So all I'm going to do, there's a bunch of places you could put it. I'm just going to put it right in the file. I'm going to do add file, upload files, and I'm going to choose a file. You can also drag them. I'm going to call, I'm going to look for katie.pdf because that's my, um, that's what I call my CV. There we go. And then I'm going to hit commit and my CV should be available. So it's going to take a few minutes and now my CV is there. I just uploaded it. Cool. Okay, so we'll have to wait again a few minutes for that to take place. It's just rebuilding behind the scenes on GitHub. We're not doing anything. We just upload the files. GitHub recognizes that some files have been added and it rebuilds the website. So we have CV, lab, blog, lab, CV. Let's refresh and see if the CV is showing up. Nope, not yet. Let's go back to the config file to make sure we've said the right thing. KD.pdf, that's what the file name is, so that's what should happen. Give it a few minutes. And it should refresh for us. Okay, so let's now, while we're waiting for the CV to update, let's think about the blog for a second. So if we go to blog, remember I told you before that we are showing some of the just sample blog posts. So I'm going to show you how to update those. So those get stored inside this folder called posts. These are the three um, blog posts that exist. Let me go back to blog so you can see. Welcome to Jekyll, Markdown Examples, Advanced Examples. So blog posts are uh, in Jekyll are super easy. There's a prescribed way of doing them that will allow them to load. And this is how it works. So let's add a new file. Let's just look at one of them, for example. So we can see here, this is the um, advanced examples. So we'll click on that. Advanced examples. Um, so what we can do is just peek at this file. We'll do edit. So you want to look at what the header material looks like. Here we go. So this is just being written in Markdown. There's header material here. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to go back to posts. And let's say we want to add a new post. When you do this, what you want to do is you have to give it the name of the date you want to appear. So I'm going to put today's date. I think it's like January 14th, 2021, 04. 01, 14, might be the 15th or even later. Um, and then we'll give it uh, any title, new post dot markdown. So Jekyll uses this date tag to apply a date here. We don't have to do anything else to get the date to show up. And then we want to add that header material. So I just copied it from the other one. Um, and we can change a couple of these. MathJax means it, it can write um, equations. I'm just going to leave it at true. Layout post means it's going to use the post layout, so it should it should make the, whatever we write down here look like this. So we'll leave that true. Categories is a list of categories. Um, they are not. I don't see them showing up anywhere on here, but they can be helpful later if you want to group things by category. So I'm going to call this GitHub um, and website. Actually, if you want to do two things, in here you have to do it like this: GitHub and website. Okay, and then I'm going to change the title to be Our New Post. Great. Okay, so then the last thing to do is just add some text. We can do any markdown, like a header, and then other text, link, And then we'll hit 
submit, and we should have a new blog post. So let's go back to our main website. Again, there's my front page. Everything looks good. Here's my CV. Here's my still not showing up. Something is a muck there. We'll go back and look. Should really be working. I'm not really totally sure why it's not. Um, we'll fix that later, and then we can go over to our blog and see if it got rebuilt. Let's press refresh, and there's our new post, and it shows up at the top because by default it's sorting by date. When we click on it, we can see everything we just um, wrote. So remember, the date shows up, it reads it from that file. Our new post is our title, and then this is the text we wrote. And let me go back and show it to you so you can see it again. We'll go inside the post folder, and our new post is here. And we can see we wrote header goes here, other text, and then we have the link to my lab's website. Um, so that's all you have to do to create your website. You can go and look on Jekyll um, if you want. If you want to do more customization, you can learn how to do that. There's a couple of tutorials, like if you want to sort things by, um, by category, um, by collection, all sorts of things you can do to customize, or you can just keep it simple and only make a couple of these small changes like we've done here.